Today we're going to take a look at the collection of 19th century Russian art at the Trepikov Gallery in Moscow. My name is Kathy Locke. I'm a San Francisco-based figurative painter, graduate professor, and the editor-in-chief of musingsonart.org. I have chosen a few choice pieces to discuss in detail, but let us begin with an overview of this great collection of Russian art. The museum's founder was Pavel Trepikov, who at the age of 24 decided he wanted to start a public art museum. It was 1856 and Pavel was just a modest merchant at the time living in Moscow. His first acquisitions were bought at a book market, but over the years his flair for collecting became very keen. Pavel did not miss a single exhibition, often buying paintings from artist studios way before they were scheduled to exhibit. Soon the artist got word that this man with money and his mission to start a museum. One of his indispensable advisors was one of Russia's most famous artists, Ilik Repin. And during a student exhibition, Trepikov bought his first painting by Isaac Levitan against the advice of Repin. Trepikov also recognized the talent of a 23-year-old Valentin Serov, today considered one of the greatest masters of Russian Impressionists. The first painting of his that Trepikov bought was Girl Bathed in Sunlight, even though Repin and other artists were highly critical of it. Pavel began his gallery in his home. As you can imagine, he started to run out of room for all these paintings. In 1872, he built a two-story gallery that adjoined the south wall of his home. In 1882, the gallery widened again, adding six rooms. With the addition of eight more rooms in 1885, he was able to put the paintings in order for the very first time. For an hour each morning before going to work, Pavel would walk the halls of his gallery in silent meditation. After the death of his brother, Sergei, in 1892, Pavel Trefikov made a gift of both their collections to the city of Moscow. Pavel's collection alone included 1,287 paintings, 518 drawings and nine sculptures, all by Russian artists. August 15, 1893 was the official opening of the museum and it was called the Pavel and Sergei Trefikov City Art Gallery. Up until this time, pa people were allowed into Pavel's home on Sundays to view the artwork. Pavel died in 1898 and his last words were, take care of the gallery and stay strong. Among Pavel Trepikov's favorite artists was the portrait art artist Ivan Kramskoy. The American Society of Portrait Artists says Kramskoy is arguably the most important Russian portrait artist in history. Amongst his achievements, Kramskoy is famous for organizing a group of artists who later became known as the Wanderers. This group wanted independence from the bureaucratic control of the Imperial Academy. In 1873, Pavel Trefikov commissioned a portrait of Leo Tolstoy for his gallery. Tolstoy had refused several times. Trefikov wrote to Kramskoy, please use all your charm to persuade him. Tolstoy finally agreed and they both ended up liking each other very much. While Kramskoy was living at Tolstoy's house painting his portrait, Kramskoy was working on the book Anna Karenina and he even used Kramskoy's character in the novel. This painting, Portrait of an Unknown Woman, caused a sensation when it was first exhibited because a woman was pres presumed to be a prostitute coming home from work in the early morning hours. One critic wrote, 
a provocatively beautiful woman dressed in velvet and fur, throwing you a sneeringly sensuous glance from a luxurious carriage. Due to this, Pavel Trefikov refused to buy the painting. The painting has always been tied to Leo Toyskoy's book, Anacrina, and has even been used for the cover. But the book was published in 1873, and this was painted 10 years later. The truth of the matter is that Kramskoy was inspired by a similar scene that he saw when he was visiting Warsaw, Poland during one of his exhibitions there. Kramskoy painted this when he returned. The woman is seated in an open carriage at Anachkov Bridge in St. Petersburg. Knowing Kramskoy, I would say he was making a statement about morals, perhaps not what his critics thought, but instead saying, who are you to judge this woman? Ilyak Repin was a self-made man. During the time of his birth in 1844, there was a caste system in Russia where its citizens were rated by class. Repin's father was a military settler, which was in a category one level above a state-owned peasant. Thus, upon his birth, Ilya was legally bound to live and work according to the demands of the state. In 1863, with 50 rubles in his pocket, Repin arrived in St. Petersburg to begin his artistic training. He passed the Imperial Academy's examination one year later, and in May of 1865, Repin won a small silver medal award. Though it was the Academy's lowest award, it gave him full citizenship and liberated him from the military obligations he had inherited from birth. Repin was bestowed with the title of free artist, giving him complete liberty to pursue any calling. Throughout his long artistic career, Repin was drawn to the common people with whom he shared his origins, often aligned himself with Kramskoy's group, The Wanderers, by painting scenes that displayed Russia's social classes and the tensions that divided them. In 1883, Repin completed one of his most psychologically intense paintings on the story of the Tsar Ivan the Terrible killing his son. This canvas displays a horrified Ivan embracing his dying son, whom he had just struck and mortally wounded in an uncontrolled fit of rage. This event occurred in 1581, yet Repin dedicated this painting to Tsar Alexander II, who was assassinated in 1881 by a group belonging to the Reform Movement. Repin's comments about this work were, Be careful what you do with your rage. You could end up doing more harm than good. The assassination caused a great setback for reform in Russia. Alexander II had completed plans for an elected parliament the day before he died. He had not yet released the plan to the Russian people. Had he lived another 48 hours, the plan would have been released. Russia might have followed the path to constitutional monarchy instead of a, the long road of oppression that defined his successor's reign. The first action by Alexander III after his coronation was to tear up those plans. A number of Russian artists created paintings in response to the assassination of Alexander II using a primarily red analogous palette, so much so that in 1881 it was referred to as the Year of Red. This painting was so important to Pavel Trefikov that he acquired it without even seeing it while it was still in Repin's studio. Here we have another red analogous palette. Philip Malavin painted World Win right after Bloody Sunday, which on October 17, 1905, peaceful demonstrators, many of which were women and children, were killed near the Imperial Academy. Many artists witnessed these killings from their studio windows. We can read into this painting an unleashing of both spiritual revival and destructive forces. In this beautiful painting, Malavin melds Russian Impressionism with abstraction. Drawing on his own personal history, he creates heroines of old Russian legends. The clothing of these peasant women become streams of warm and cool colors that dance around the canvas. The influence of the artist Anders Sorn is seen in Maleva's bold brushwork. We can also see influences of sound painting that Russian artist Wazley Kandinsky was also experimenting with during this time period. Malavin uses 
this technique to create dynamic sweeping movements that produce rhythm. Philip Mulavin was born into a poor peasant family in 1869. He studied under Iliak Repin at the Imperial Academy in St. Petersburg starting in 1892. As an artist, he was strongly influenced by French Impressionist and Scandinavian artist Anders Sorn. Mulevin preferred to work on large canvases where he could get very expressive. He became famous for his bright, colored paintings of peasants which which kept with his humble upbringing his most well-known peasant painting is world wind it secured him a position as a professor at the imperial academy in 1922 while traveling to berlin and paris to attend his solo exhibitions he decided to immigrate throughout the 30s he painted several portraits of swedish royalty in 1940 he was arrested by the gestapo in brussels and was accused of espionage. He was released a few months later, and at the age of 71, he was forced to return to Nice on foot. Malevin died in Nice later that year. Mikhail Rubel was a transitional figure between traditional and modern art. He is regarded as the greatest of all the Russian symbolist painters. His work concentrated on the supernatural and mystical elements of art. This large painting called Seated Demon brought notoriety to Rubel for the very first time. Here, Rubel poses questions of good and evil and putting forward his idea of a heroic personality as he saw it. Rubel depicted a rebel unwilling to accept the commonplace and unjust nature of reality tragically alone. The word demon is Greek for soul, and Rubel considered a demon in this painting to be the soul of a lonely man. This painting is a very personal reflection for Rubel as he was exploring his own feelings of loneliness. Rubel first came up with the idea for this painting in 1889, and he describes it as follows. A half-naked, winged, young, moody, and thoughtful figure sits, hugging his knees against the sunset and looks at a flowering field where branches rotting under flowers stretch. Rubel places his demon in a horizontal composition which makes the figure feel cramped, but increases our impression of his size. His demon's sadness is not sterile. He is in a world where flowers are transformed into crystals. Working with a palette knife, Rubel seems to combine the techniques of a painter and a sculptor, which give rise to a technique that imitates mosaics. With this painting, we see the first significant work of the Russian symbolist movement. His demon is full of contradictions, a spiritual face and a mighty body. At this time, his technique and style are fully evolved. It is characterized by volume cut into a multitude of interrelated, intersecting facets and planes, broad mosaic brush strokes to model form, fiery and emotional color combinations reminiscent of stained glass. These characteristics appeal not only to the symbolist painters, but also future cubists who are to come. The theme of demon is the epitome of the eternal struggle of an anguished spirit and becomes central to the artist's work for the rest of his career. Mikhail Rubel was a painter, sculptor, theater designer, draftsman, and illustrator. His work stands out because of its originality. He pointed the way and made possible the experiments of succeeding decades. He influenced not only Russian symbolists, but the Cubist and abstract movements. This has been a quick look at the Trepikov Gallery in Moscow. If you like to tour the artwork in Russia, I offer a number of different programs throughout the year on art, culture, and architecture. I also offer a workshop for artists who want to join me in plein air painting. Please visit RussianArtTour.com to see these programs. For more detailed articles and videos on a wide variety of artists throughout the world, please visit musingsonart.org. This is a great place to learn about what makes good art. We also sell original fine art paintings from established artists from around the world and prints by Russian, French, and American masters. Thank you for joining me today.